Philip. Cheesy bird bass. What did you say? I have a cheesy bird bass. Three. He said three. I'm about to freak out.
So this brings us to our first point. Honor your parents. The Bible is exceedingly clear. This is what we must do. But why? Why should we honor our parents? To make our lives better, of course. God will bless you. You'll be happier, live longer, healthier, and have more joy. However, this is not a for sure thing. Your life will not be magically perfect by honoring your parents. However, have it, uh, for example, if you were to respect your parents, honor them, you would have a much better relationship with your parents, right? And this would cause a lot less tension in the family. Make your life go a little bit smoother. Also, let's say your parents say, don't go to that party, don't do drugs, don't drink alcohol. You will live a much better life because when you drink or do drugs, you know, your brain cells are going to get scrambled. You're going to get in trouble with the police and so on. And you're probably going to ruin the relationship with your parents. So obviously, this thing to your parents and honoring them, you'll live a much better life if you don't do drugs or drink alcohol. And this is a very common question. This next point is a very common question with a lot of our JI students. How do we honor a dishonorable parent? Many of you have awesome parents who love Jesus and make loving and honoring them easy. But unfortunately, that's not the case for some of you. There are many students in here with serious pain resulting from family problems. Maybe your parents hurt you or abandoned you. But I want you to know that I'm sorry. And that Jesus will never do that to you. Yes, God allowed you to be born into your family. For a reason. He doesn't make mistakes. That means for some of you, being a Jesus follower is going to be tougher than it is for others. But that is your mission from God. You may not know why until you're an adult. But know that He has a purpose and a plan for you. So you may be sitting there angry that we've been talking about honoring a parent who doesn't even deserve it. But God makes it clear that we need to honor our parents no matter what. God never said uh, to only honor parents who deserve it. He says to honor them no matter what. Now here's some particular uh, practical steps you can take to honor them. Point one, give grace. Now grace means unmerited favor or something good happening to you that you just don't deserve. What we want you to remember is that you just can't set too high a standards for your parents. Remember, they're sinners too, just like all of us. They're not going to always meet your expectations, and they will fill you at sometimes. Point number two. Joey, give forgiveness. If you refuse to forgive them, you will do the same thing to your children one day. When they sin against you, it's kind of like you've been infected. And the only way to cleanse yourself or cure yourself is to forgive them. If you refuse to forgive someone, the person you're hurting the most is yourself. My grandfather was very abusive and ruthless to his children. My uncle Luce, one of his older uh, sons, never forgave him for what he did over the years. And because of this, he is now just like him. He's hated by the rest of his family. And he hates everyone. He gets into trouble all the time. And he will probably end up dying all alone, just like his father did. Now, for our next point, let's hear from my little friend, Thumper. Thumper's taking his time. Good. Yes, Mama. What did your father tell you this morning? If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. Thank you, Thumper, for that. 
amazing advice. So we should all take a little of what Thumper just said. Who's seen that movie? Who's seen the original Bambi? It's a lot more than I thought. That's good. So you all know that if you have nothing else to say to your parents, don't say it at all, pretty much. Thank you, Thumper. And another way to honor your, uh, this brings us to our point, give honor. Giving honor to our parents. Like Thumper said, don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. Another way to honor your parents is to make it your goal to end up better than your parents. To not make the same mistakes that, to your children. When I have kids, I want them to be more godly than I am. I believe that's honor. It would be very honorable to me. So in the military, they have ranks. And, you know, everyone below a certain rank has to obey the one above. So, let's say a private and a sergeant. Every private has his drill sergeant. The private may not like his drill sergeant, but the private still has to respect the uniform that he wears as a sergeant. So, like a private does to a sergeant, even if you don't like your parents, you must respect them as your parents. You've got to respect the uniform they wear. You should also give an example. For those of you that are not honoring to your parents, what kind of example are you displaying for your younger siblings or your friends? When you end up having children, you'll end up venting negatively about your parents to your children. But you're setting an example to your kids. You're actually discipling them to dishonor your, you, ironically, by modeling what dishonor looks like. But most importantly, we should give thanks. They may not be the greatest parents, but focus on the positives. Some kids don't even have parents. They don't have the privileges you do. They don't have a father that works two jobs so that you can have three-course meal and live in a home. But if nothing else, be thankful for your Heavenly Father. That God gave you life and put you on this planet for a reason. Now that we discussed how to honor dishonorable parents, let's talk about how we can respect all parents. Third point. How do we honor parents? So, in the Old Testament, this honorable and rebellious and disrespectful teens were stoned to death. So be grateful you don't live back then. That tells us that honoring parents is serious business to God. For those of you that don't know what getting stoned means, it's not what you think. And back then, what would happen is the parents would take their disrespect and twerk of the child, take him out into the center of the village, and then everyone in the village would grab a stone and throw rocks at him until he died. And some villages actually dug holes, really deep holes, kicked their son in there, or daughter, whatever was being disrespectful, they took a giant boulder and they threw it in the hole, crushed it. So, again, let's be very thankful we don't live back then. So, as a child, from the you know, birth to about 12 years old, when you guys enter middle school, you are mainly called to obey your parents. The Bible is very clear on this. In Ephesians 6, 1-3, Paul is speaking to the Ephesians, but he turns his attention to the children for a moment. Now, pay attention. This may sound a little familiar. Children, obey your parents, because you belong to the Lord. For this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you, and you will live a long life on the earth. Sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? Brings us back to Exodus. So when your parents tell you, clean your room, do the dishes, you do it. You obey. Because, like I said, 
like the Bible tells us, do a little long and help your life. So, uh, as an adolescent, which is you guys, mainly, all of us, from the ages of 13, roughly, to the age of 25, so, middle school, college, kind of, we're called to obey and respect our parents. Lots of you don't like that word. Huh. But we're called to respect and obey our parents. That means... Don't roll your eyes. Do the dishes. <sighs> Whatever, mom. <coughs> don't talk behind their back and don't give them attitude. Now, Jesus was God when he was a kid, when he was a child. And he submitted and respected his parents. And they didn't even understand him. Now, imagine Jesus as a young child preaching at the temple. And his parents are coming up like, okay, Jesus. You have to come home and clean the donkey, feed the cattle. But mom, I have to do it for the sins of the world. You can do that after your chores, honey. Come on home, Jesus. He was probably the most misunderstood child in the history. You think your parents don't understand you. Think about Jesus. That's true. Now, as an adult, about the age of 26 and up, so one of you or your parents are dead, you're called to respect and care for your parents. Now, you don't have to obey them anymore. When your mom comes home to your house, to your place when you have children, and she goes in your room and tells you to clean your room, do your dishes, you're probably not going to do them. I know for a fact, when I have kids and live in my own house, and my mom came and told me to clean my room, I would say no. Because I'd like my room messy. Right on. And caring for your parents means more than just waiting until they're old enough to put into a home. Oh, Mom, you're 50 years old. I'm just going to put you in a retirement home. They never visit you, never see you, never let you see your grandchildren, or anything. This means you need to watch over them and care for them like they cared for you your entire life. Now, Jesus cared for his mother, Mary, and he showed this on the cross. When he was nailed up on the cross, he looked down and two familiar faces were shown below him. His mother, Mary, and his best friend, John. And Jesus looked down and told John, watch over my mother while I'm gone. Take care of her. However, there's no age limit to caring for your parents' spiritual life. This is a photo of Pastor Adam and his friend Jorge, who lives in Miami. Jorge was raised in Mexico by Catholic parents. When Jorge was a teenager, he visited an evangelical church like Oak Creek, and he accepted Jesus as his personal savior. However, his parents didn't like that, especially his dad. It was very discouraging to Jorge in his new faith. This went on for years, but Jorge continued to honor and respect his father who eventually was impacted by the love and the light of Jesus that he saw in his son. And he accepted Jesus also. Today, both Jorge's parents are now Jesus followers, and his dad is actually a pastor. In Jehai, we frequently challenge you to share the gospel with your friends and your parents. Jorge's incredible story is proof that Jesus can use you to reach your unbelieving parents and friends for him. Even while you're in middle school. This brings us to our fourth point. How to witness to an unsaved parent. Now, if you have an unbelieving parent, along with honoring, respecting, and obeying them, you need to remember that you may be the only Christian they know. That's a high calling. It's a really, really heavy responsibility. Now, imagine this. If you were the only picture of Jesus your parents ever saw, how would you look to them? My parents call themselves Christians. But in the Bible it says that we need to prove that we're Jesus' followers by our good fruit or deeds. Thinking back, though, 
I never saw them reading the Bible or even praying. I had to come to that tough realization that there was no evidence of a personal relationship with Jesus. I had to stop lying to myself to admit that my parents aren't saved. When I did that, I realized that Jesus wanted me to be a missionary to my own parents. Many of you are sitting there and just realize that my story is your story. That God is calling you to be a missionary to your parents as well. I know it's intimidating and scary. But remember, you are not the ones doing the saving to your parents. That's God's job. Our job is to shine God's light and love, just like Jorge did to his parents. And the reason why I do this and why I'm a missionary to my parents is because I want to see my parents in heaven someday. It's scary, but it's worth it to be a missionary. In closing, I want you guys to write down on your notes, how can you honor your parents starting today? instead of ending up where we deserve, in hell. Now, if you feel something going on in your heart right now, and you don't know what that is, it's not my voice. It's Jesus knocking on the door of your heart, asking you to let him in. Now, it's up to you, let him in or not. If you're sitting here today, and you know that you need to give your life to Jesus and say yes to him finally. Now just repeat the words that I'm about to pray. Just repeat them silently to yourself if you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior before. And you mean it in your heart. Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and that I need a Savior. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and rose from the dead on the third day. And I accept you today as my personal Savior. Save me. Forgive me of my sin. Change me. And help me to live for you every day for the rest of my life. 
Amen. Now, your head's still down, eyes still closed. Virgo Creek, we like to recognize those who make this amazing decision. Now, guys, realize that this decision to accept Jesus as a personal Savior is the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. It's more important what high school you end up, what classes you will take in college, what your career is going to be when you're an adult. Even more important than who you're going to marry. Because accepting Jesus as your personal Savior will determine where you will end up in life and in the next. Now, when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand if you've made this important decision today, November 10th, 2013. And you mean it in your heart. One, two, three. Jesus, God, thank you for bringing these students here today to the bask in your word. Lord, thank you for opening their hearts up and letting your word come in. Lord, bless and protect these students for this week and let them go home and honor their parents in a whole new way to please you. And Lord, for everyone, I hope that you will give them the courage to be a missionary in their own homes. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us. Amen. All right, we have some knee group questions. Our leaders will line up here. Up front, guys, go with the guy later. Girls, go with the girl later. 